today's video is on nitrogen chemistry. So the regions of nitrogen chemistry that we're going to be looking at include nitrogen properties, the nitrogen cycle, nitrification, a process within the nitrogen cycle, types of nitrogen oxides and how denitrification can form these nitrogen oxides and then testing for nitrate ions, ammonium ions and ammonia gas. So starting with the properties of nitrogen. So atmospheric nitrogen is quite unreactive. So here we have our atmospheric nitrogen. So nitrogen is found in the atmosphere as this gas N2. So it's quite unreactive. And this is because of the triple nitrogen bond. So this triple nitrogen bond is three very strong covalent bonds between the two nitrogen molecules, meaning it has a large bond enthalpy because it needs a lot of energy to overcome these strong covalent bonds. And so the reactions with this nitrogen have very high activation enthalpies and this is because a lot of energy is required to break these bonds to allow for other compounds to form. So nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons. So you can see here our example molecule is ammonia and our nitrogen is bonded to three hydrogens and it has a lone pair of electrons because nitrogen has five electrons on its outer shell. So nitrogen has this lone pair of electrons. So this lone pair is responsible for ammonia's basic properties. So the nitrogen's lone pair of electrons allows ammonia to be a base because it allows it to be an electron acceptor, a pro no, electron donator, a proton acceptor, and release hydroxyl ions in solution. So the lone pair of electrons is also responsible for allowing the formation of dative covalent bonds. So this nitrogen that we have here has these two lone electrons, and this is and these lone electrons are able to donate themselves to a covalent bond. So instead of having one electron from the hydrogen and one from the nitrogen to form a covalent bond, both of the electrons come from our nitrogen to form a dative covalent bond. It is donating these electrons to the bond and accepting a proton, a H plus ion and this forms an ammonium ion. So it's got a positive charge and it's our nitrogen bonded to four hydrogens. And it is um, important to remember that these dative covalent bonds, once they have been formed, are equivalent to normal covalent bonds. So now looking at the nitrogen cycle, which is a massive important part of nitrogen chemistry. So nitrogen cannot be directly used by plants. So we know that plants need to use nitrogen in growth because they need it for amino acids to make proteins and they also need it for their DNA. So we know that plants need nitrogen, but they cannot directly use it. And this is because nitrogen is unreactive, as we've seen before with this triple covalent bond. So it cannot use atmospheric nitrogen. And also, nitrogen cannot be directly used because it is in complex organic compounds in the soil. So it's not just freely in the soil, readily available. It is in complex organic compounds, so the plants cannot directly get the nitrogen from them. So the nitrogen cycle is a series of processes that convert gaseous nitrogen and organic nitrogen compounds into soluble ammonium and nitrate 5 ions that the plant can use. So it takes this gaseous nitrogen and nitrogen in organic containing uh, nitrogen containing compounds in the soil and it converts this nitrogen into either ammonium ions or nitrate 5 ions and these are the ions that the plant can then absorb and use the nitrogen from. So we've talked about nitrate ions, but what type of nitrate ions are there? So we've mentioned nitrate 5 ions because the plants can use them. And this is what they look like here. And then there are also nitrate 3 ions. 
and this is what it looks like. So these two are both called nitrate ions, however they are distinguished by their oxidation state. So nitrate 5 ions, the nitrogen has a um, oxidation state of 5 and this is because each of the oxygens have a 2 minus oxidation state. And so if you add all of the 2 minuses of our 3 oxygens, that means we have a 6 minus charge. And if we have a minus charge overall, it's going to take our nitrogen to be a plus 5 to get our minus 6 to a minus overall. So that's why nitrate 5. And the same for nitrate 3 ions. And so both of these ions are both very soluble in water, and this is because they have a charge, so they're able to interact with the charged water molecules. And they are made by the oxidation of ammonium ions. So now moving on to the process of nitrification. So nitrifying bacteria in the soil convert ammonium ions into nitrate ions and uh, this is to release respiratory energy. So we said in our previous slide that our nitrite, uh, our nitrate ions are formed through the oxidation of ammonium ions and this is done by nitrifying bacteria. So our nitrifying bacteria oxidize ammonium ions to release respiratory energy through this process of nitrification. So we'll see the process of that here. So our first step is our ammonium ions in our soil are oxidized. So through the addition of oxygen, as you can see here, our ammonium ion in our soil is being added to oxygen. And this forms a nitrite ion. So you can see that here, and this is through the combination of our nitrogen from our ammonium ion and oxygen. And so you can see in this molecule we don't have any hydrogens, so we have to um, get rid of these hydrogens. And these hydrogens can either combine with some of the oxygen to form water, or they can remain as hydrogen ions. So we form our nitrite ion. Um, we form protons and water. And it's this nitrite ion that can then go to be further oxidized through the addition of oxygen to form our nitrate ion. And this nitrate ion can then be used by the plants. It can be readily available to be absorbed. Now moving on to nitrogen oxides. So nitrogen has many oxides, but the main ones that you'll have to know about are in this table. So we have nitrogen oxide with the formula NO. So this, has, this is a colourless gas, and it is formed from uh, combustion in engines. So you can see the, for, uh, the equation here. So we have atmospheric nitrogen combining with oxygen under the high heat of the engine to then form our nitrogen oxide. And this nitrogen oxide can also be formed through thunderstorms and denitrifying bacteria in the soil. So we saw nitrification on the other slide, but denitrification is the conversion of nitrate ions back into atmospheric nitrogen. So nitrification was the conversion into nitrate ions. Denitrification is the conversion of nitrate ions back. So that is how we can form our nitrogen oxide. And then we have nitrogen dioxide, so N. O2, and this is a brown gas, and this is formed from the oxidation of nitrogen oxide. So our nitrogen oxide that we have here can be combined with oxygen to then form our nitrogen dioxide through the addition of oxygen. Oh, sorry. And then we have our dinitrogen oxide oxide, so N2O, and this is another colourless gas, and this is again formed by denitrifying bacteria in the soil. So this is the conversion of nitrate ions back into atmospheric nitrogen. So what is this process of denitrification? So if we see our table here, denitrification can form nitrogen oxide, NO, and dinitrogen oxide. So what is 
denitrification. So when the oxygen content in the soil is low, anaerobic bacteria can reduce nitrate 5 ions. So nitrification is performed by aerobic bacteria because they're using oxygen to oxidize. They're adding oxygen to these ammonium ions. But when there is no oxygen in the soil, these anaerobic bacteria can then backtrack this reaction. They can reduce the nitrate 5 ions that have been formed. And reduction is the loss of oxygen or the gain of electrons. So if we see in this process here, we start with our nitrate 5 ions and then this is converted through the process of reduction, our loss of oxygen into our nitrite ion that we formed initially when during the process of nitrification. And then we lose oxygen again through reduction to form our nitrogen oxide. So this is where our nitrogen oxide can be formed. But then this nitrogen oxide is further reduced to um, dinitrogen oxide, which is where this can be formed. And then it is again reduced to atmospheric nitrogen. So finally, we're going to be looking at the tests for ions. So first is the test for nitrate 5 ions. So you add uh, sodium hydroxide solution and Devardas alloy. So this is a mixture of aluminium, zinc and copper and our aluminium acts as our reducing agent. So then once we've added these to our sample, we then heat gently. And as our aluminium acts as our reducing agent, it will um, reduce whatever is in our sample. And if nitrate 5 ions are present, it will be reduced to ammonia. So ammonia gas will be given off. And we can see that in our equation here. So we start with our nitrate 5 ions. We have our aluminium, which is our reducing agent that we have got from Devardas alloy. We have our hydroxyl uh, ions, which have been given from our sodium hydroxide, uh, and our sodium hydroxide is only there because we need to have these hydroxide ions, so our sodium hydroxide donates these ions. And then we have water because it is a solution. And this aluminium acts as a reducing agent to reduce our, nitri our nitrate ions into ammonia. So we have ammonia gas and then we also produce this complex ion. So then is the test for ammonium ions. So our, a test for nitrate ions was a positive test of giving off ammonia gas and so is our ammonium ion test. So first we add sodium hydroxide solution to our sample. We then gent, uh, gently heat and if ammonium ions are present, ammonia gas should be given off. So this is exactly the same as our test for nitrate ions. However, we just don't have Devardas alloy. So everything is exactly the same, even the positive test is the same, ammonia gas will be given off. And the equation for this is our ammonium ion here is then added to our hydroxyl ion which has been donated from our sodium hydroxide and we form our ammonia, gas and water. And now we're just going to finally look at the test for ammonia gas. So how do we detect a positive test result? So it is all good saying that if our nitrate ions or our ammonium ions are present, ammonia gas will be given off. But how do we know if ammonia gas is given off? And we know this by either uh, turning damp red litmus paper blue and this is detecting basic conditions because our ammonia is basic because of the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen in ammonia. So because the ammonia is basic, it will turn the red litmus paper blue. Or you can detect ammonia gas uh, because it will form white fumes with hydrogen chloride gas. And this is because when the ammonia is mixed with this hydrogen chloride gas, it forms ammonium chloride. And this is the white fumes that we'll see.